to throw. It's a long one. The Irish won again the next season, but then the schools took separate paths, building upon two of the game's proudest traditions. Apart, but linked by a common heritage of great players. Legendary coaches and championship teams. Last year, the giant horseshoe that is Ohio Stadium was jammed with 95,000 for the renewal of the rivalry as the Buckeyes prevailed. Lou Holtz and John Cooper, direct coaching descendants from the Giants of the past. Now they return to Notre Dame for the first time in 60 years, over six decades since the game of the century, and it still quickens the pulse. Ohio State and Notre Dame. called a sack for a sack. For every quarterback sack, the Buckeyes deliver. Can you believe team in a walk by St. Joseph's Lake? Orlando Pace clearing a path as usual as the Buckeyes arrive. It's a tough ticket, but the lucky 60,000 or so are in for a treat. There's nothing in sports like a big game weekend at Notre Dame, and especially so when the opponent is also steeped in tradition, ranked in the top 10, and making its first trip here in 60 years. It's Ohio State and Notre Dame. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Notre Dame for the Battle of the Unbeatens, Tom Howland and Bob Trumpy. Ohio State, Bob, comes in averaging 71 points a game. Lou Holtz, didn't know how to defend them either with a full-court press or a box and one. <laughs> and the question going around uh, college football is, how good are they? Yeah, and you know, when we went to Ohio State the other day, John Cooper was asking the question, too. He said, look, frankly, I don't know how good we are, but everything we've tried works. We put in a young kid, a freshman, a true freshman. He scored. Nothing has gone wrong with this football team. He said, I don't expect it to be that easy this weekend at South Bend. Yeah, they're going to get their first test today. The Irish, on the other hand, in their first three games, have been tested twice at Vanderbilt and then that rousing win at Texas last week. Yeah, and the manner in which the team came back, you know, from uh, fourth quarter deficit to win the team, Lou Holtz knows about this football team, and, and maybe more importantly, the team knows about itself. They believe. Tom, I'm telling you, these are two physical football teams steeped in tradition. I got my ankles taped this morning. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready, too. And uh, the Notre Dame players are getting ready. Some final moments, some final thoughts from Coach Lou Holtz before they take the field. And what's at stake? Well, Ohio State ranked fourth, Notre Dame fifth. Both are unbeaten. The winner will stay alive in the chase for the national championship. The Buckeyes and the Irish in the shadow of the Golden Dome. Kickoff coming up. I'm Tom Hanks. I'm Deanna as the Irish file out of their locker room with the traditional touching of the sign play like a champion today that traces all the way back to Newt Rockney. And they'll gather in the tunnel for their appearance onto the field. Lou Holtz saying yesterday he's tired of answering questions about Ohio State. Did they invent football? Is this a coronation? Why doesn't somebody ask me about my team? He said, I'll say one thing. The Buckeyes better be ready to play today. But he was loose. Yep. Very relaxed this week. Jim Sanson in the middle of that mix, the hero of the last second field goal to beat Texas a week ago in Austin. Lou Holtz has passed Newt Rockney, coached more games than any coach in Notre Dame history. And that big game feel all over the campus today as we talked to the Notre Dame players and coaches yesterday, relaxed, confident, loose. And a 
new confidence that we haven't seen in a, in a while for this team. They believe apparently in each other and in Coach Holtz and in their quarterback, Ron Holtz. And here are the Irish. chilly overcast afternoon mid 50s the wind 15 to 20 miles an hour could be a factor well all the trappings of a big game and enjoying it all down on the field of the stadium our sideline reporter John Dockery Doc? Tom you mentioned the big game feel and it certainly is here today a capacity excited crowd overflowing press box tickets like this are going for over five hundred dollars a shot two unbeaten highly ranked teams with a shot at the brass ring. And you know what else, Tom? Notre Dame, a rare underdog at home. So you can understand the pressure cooker that Ohio State quarterback Stanley Jackson and Joe Germain are in. Jackson, in his first road start, said Notre Dame Stadium is a place that every young American boy dreams of playing in. Well, he's here today, and the question is, can John Cooper's rotating quarterbacks deal with one of college football's loudest and most difficult environments? Tom, we're about to find out. We are indeed as John Cooper coaches at Notre Dame Stadium for the first time in his career in his ninth season at Ohio State. When we were in Columbus the other day, John Cooper was calling his offensive staff the dream team. <laughs> and why not? Averaging 71 points a game. And Lou Holtz in his 11th season at the helm of the Irish, the 26th of his career as a head coach, and one year spent as an assistant at Ohio State. They've only played three times. That was the game of the century in Columbus, 1935, upset by the Irish. They won in South Bend, and that was the last time they played here before today. The rivalry renewed in Columbus last year before 95,000. They'll play today and then no time uh, again in the foreseeable future, which is a shame. Uh, two great names in college football. And Trump, a little poetic license is allowed here. Was, was that a halo around the Notre Dame Stadium? <laughs> no, that's the expansion. There'll be uh, people in that halo area next year to expand Notre Dame Stadium. But it's a shame these two teams don't meet on a regular basis. Sanson set for the kick with Stanley and Springs deep for Ohio State. This will be Stanley at the two. With a seam, Demetrius Stanley, the kicker Sanson misses, cuts back. Demetrius Stanley finally caught the 13 yard line an 85 yard return shades of Alan Rossum the last time the Irish played here he took it 99 yards for a touchdown against Purdue tables turned here for Demetrius Stanley and Tom Alan Rossum makes the tackle the Considered fastest the, man on the Irish right. team you'll see the Notre Dame kickoff team they kind of hit and hold right there and Stanley comes through with a lot of speed. Kicker misses him. Now watch 15. Allen Rossum. Well, he runs him down, but how about this for field position? So Ohio State quarterback Stanley Jackson has scored on his last 14 possessions last, back to last season. Handoff to tailback Peppy Pearson. Thrown back by the Irish defense. 
Ohio State inside the 20 this season, their first two games against Rice and Pitt. Nearly invincible, scoring at a touchdowns at an 80% clip. But Tom, any offensive stat you put up on Ohio State in these first two games, you think it's a mistake. Right. But it's absolutely shocking. Second and nine, eye formation, Calhoun the fullback, Pearson the tailback. Pearson can't get loose. Once again, the Irish up front, led by Ronaldo Wynn, make the stop. Now, uh, this is strength against strength here. Front seven of the Notre Dame defense and the offensive line of Ohio State. Last year, it was Notre Dame's choice to slant their defensive front. This offense, uh, offensive line of Ohio State, they don't really fire out. They're more of a zone-blocking team. Bob Davey told us yesterday his choice this year is to get them up the field, make them penetrate. From the 11, it's third down and eight. Two tight ends, Jones and Hauser, attacking Bob Davies' defense. Jackson gets the corner. Close to the first down. Stanley Jackson scrambling to his left. Finally knocked out of bounds, but it'll be very close to a Buckeye first down. He's the wild card in, in this offense. I think any defensive coordinator's greatest fear is a quarterback who can throw proficiently and will run. Now, Bob Davey wanted the nose tackle, Alt Maiden, 42, to uh, at least spy on the quarterback. But uh, Stanley Jackson, with his great speed, got to the corner, picks up the first down. First and goal from the Irish three. Three tight ends now, Jones, Lumpkin, and Hauser. That's Hauser as the H-back on the right. Pearson. Hit off one man, touchdown. The quick strike, Buckeye offense, thanks to the 85 yard kickoff return by Demetrius Stanley, punches it in the end zone. Pepe Pearson's seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Now Josh Jackson to attempt the extra point. Bartholomew to hold. High snap, Bartholomew can't get it down. And the conversion will be no good. Hauser, Bob Hauser, the tight end is the long snapper. The snap was not good. And the first uh, cloud of darkness over Ohio State in the first minutes of this game. Demetrius Stanley returns the opening kick 85 yards. And the Buckeyes go to Pearson for the three-yard touchdown run. Buckeyes up early. Stay in the administration building and uh, the crowd in shock here, Bob. Yeah. Ohio State likes to run left behind Orlando Pace. I don't blame them one bit. <laughs> Tatum, number two, misses the tackle. Pearson, not as big as Eddie George, but quicker and with great strength. And on that extra point, you see the contact here. Rossum comes up with the ball, and something happened to the kicker, his right arm or shoulder. And it's Stanley, who had the big kickoff return and gave Ohio State the great field position. Minute 45 gone by as Andy Stamp kicks off for the Buckeyes. And taken by one of the up men, Robert Farmer. And Farmer plows across the 30-yard line where the Irish will take over. A 16-yard kickoff return. So a four-play scoring drive that covered only a minute 45 after the long kickoff return. And so the quick strike, Ohio State offense, 11 of their 21 touchdowns have taken less than two minutes. The question remaining is what will happen to them when they don't. Of course, if they keep doing it like that, it won't matter. It's moot, isn't it? Irish try to answer their first possession. Here's the give to Autry Denson. Met by Ohio State at the line of scrimmage and thrown back. Damon Moore, the strong safety, comes up quick for run support. Starting lineup here for the Irish. That's a great big offensive line with the exception of the run. Rick Kaczynski is only 265. 
Ron Paulus and his backs and receivers. Denson averaging nearly five yards a carry. And Mark Edwards from Norwood, Ohio. Kevin Coretta starts at tight end. Pete Kriblevich, an ankle injury against Texas, but he will play. Quick drop. Paulus pumps. He's open. Downfield. And a diving catch. No good. An attempt by Emmett Mosley. The ball falls to the turf. Should have been caught. Actually, he should have been caught and he should have run for the touchdown. He did not lose his footing whatsoever. Nice pump fake here by Ron Paulus. Excellent protection by the guys up front. They come with a five-man rush, blitzing two linebackers. This is well thrown. There is no excuse for Mosley here. Uh, if he just keeps running, he's in the end zone. Like it hit him right on the numbers. Mosley, the senior from Aurora, Colorado, has caught 10 passes on the season. Spread formation, four wides on third and 10. Paulus, buys some time, got it away incomplete, just threw it away as the protection broke down, and the Irish will punt after three plays. Well, they had their chance to Mosley. Gatson Moyer, the uh, young true freshman, spread formation. Actually, protection is good. And when Ron Paulus steps up, he really doesn't have a receiver running where he can uh, bail out. Makes the good choice and just throws the ball out of bounds. Hunter, the punter Smith for his 13th of the season, and the dangerous Sean Springs is deep. End over end from Smith. Springs at the 27th. Got away from the first man, but not the second. Aubrey Denson hit him initially. And then the finishing touch is put on by the pursuit of five-yard return of a 43-yard punt. Buckeyes take over again, leading by six. It was right elbow on that missed extra point attempt. Uh, it's not his leg. He'll be back to kick. <laughs> but he's in some pain. Pearson dodges a man. Oh, it's a fake. And a pass from Jackson is complete to the tight end, D.J. Jones. And Jones has about 13 yards and a first down. Knocked out of bounds by Benny Gilbo. And the Buckeyes with the play action fake to Pearson and a pass to tight end, D.J. Jones. Orlando Pace is the man to watch up front. Many say the best lineman in all of college football. Heisman Trophy candidate and the first sophomore winner of the Lombardi Award last year. Stanley Jackson now has scored the last 15 possessions and Pepe Pearson, they say, the fastest running back ever at Ohio State. This is the fullback crashing into Notre Dame territory. Matt Calhoun with a pretty good gain of about eight yards. As you see other college football scores, here's the Notre Dame front three win, Maiden and Dansby. Dansby having to go against Pace most of the afternoon. And the linebackers, Minor, Cobbins, and Tatum with Barry. And then Covington, Ross, and Madison, and Gilbo, the secondary of the Irish. Many think that's the weak part. Strong with a front seven, the secondary a question mark. Pearson hit in the backfield and stopped by Alton Maiden. Maiden, the young man who flunked out of school a year ago. He said it was a matter of maturity. He got a job. He took some classes at Indiana South Bend and got his life in order. There he is right there. Yeah, he said he couldn't watch the Irish play football on television last year. He worked as a waiter in a local hotel. He would watch it on replay, but he just couldn't get himself to sit down in front of the TV and watch. Welcome back to the squad. Now starts. Thomas Lou Holtz, who will be a factor, had over a three-point last semester. Here's the option. Stanley, flag down. Stanley stops short of the first down. First penalty marker of the game. It's against Ohio State, apparently. An all-Big Ten officiating crew today. Jim Kemmerling, the referee. On the offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. So a rare Buckeye punt. Brent Bartholomew, the sophomore from Apopka, Florida, has punted only twice this season. Yeah, so this is a field, he says. Now I understand what I'm supposed to do. 
Audrey Denson deep for the Irish. Took a lot of time and it's blocked. Blocked by Barry. And the Irish will have it at the 49 of Ohio State. I suppose when you are only on the field twice, it doesn't feel very comfortable to be out there on the field punting. I don't know why he hesitates. He looks he, like he hadn't punted much. Yeah. He, he fumbles uh -huh. the ball a little bit, trying to be a little too fancy, and Bert Berry, the defensive end, gets a hand on it. I do believe Alan Watson, the corner, is the guy who comes up with the recovery, but great field position now for the Irish. So a mistake on special teams by the Buckeyes. Great field position for Notre Dame. Here's the fullback, Mark Edwards, from Norwood, Ohio, recruited by Ohio State, but cast his lot with the Irish, gets only a yard on first down. Buckeye defense, Pinkus, Garnett, Pickle, and Brable up front, very tough. Andy Katzenmoyer is the leading tackler, the middle linebacker. He's just a freshman, true freshman, and Sean Springs, one of the best covering cornerbacks in college football. There's Katzenmoyer wearing number 45, two-time Heisman winner Archie Griffin's old number. Some controversy about that. Screen pass complete to Audrey Denson, and Ohio State is ready for it. Damon Moore gets the penetration and the safety bumps Denson out of bounds. That's a play we've seen a yes. lot from uh, Notre Dame, and obviously the Buckeyes have seen it too. The one good thing about Ohio State's defense is they have corners that can play bump and run, so that allows the safeties to cheat the line of scrimmage a little more. And we've seen Damon Moore, number 13, in two instances, be right up there to make the tackle for little or no gain. They plug each the defensive coordinator first year as a defensive coordinator he likes his job you know, Why not? Offense, <laughs> offense averaging 71 points a game and he's given up three and a half on it Hollis unloads just threw it away as the Buckeyes were converging on him so again it's three and out for Paulus and the Notre Dame offense Paulus has hit only one of his first four passes they bring let's see four go ahead and run it See how many they bring here. The front four come five, six, seven guys. One untouched. That's Rob Kelly, the safety. I mean, that's just a good call by Puggage. The Notre Dame did not have enough people to pick up all the blitzes. I asked Paul uh, yesterday if uh, was it my imagination or has he been getting off to a slow start in games? And he said, not really, more a matter of caution than it is sputtering at the start. And he said only one of four, that time under extreme pressure. High towering punt by Smith. Springs will let it hit. Notre Dame will down it inside the five. Kevin Coretta downfield to stop it after 44 yards. And the Buckeyes are backed up deep after the excellent punt and coverage by Notre Dame. But Ohio State leads. The Notre Dame campus says we continue a tradition of over 70 years. The Goodyear blimp flying high above the nation's top sporting events. The spirit of Akron. Here with us today. Ohio State from its own three-yard line. Pearson, nice little cutback and a spin out to the 10-yard line. Covered there by Benny Gilbo. Quarterback Stanley Jackson operating with the tape on his right foot during the first abbreviated Ohio State drive. He sprained his ankle, turned it mildly. Yeah, but you know, his backup, 1A and 1B, Stanley Jackson, Joe Germain. Germain has played so well, Jackson does not want to come out of the game. There's Joe Germain. He will see action here in the first half. John Cooper promised us. The better thrower of the two, uh, Jackson is the better athlete. Pearson slips and is covered for no game. Now, at this point, Notre Dame winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And that's a big change from last year. You know, Ohio State had 533 total yards against Notre Dame in Columbus last year, and this was a huge feature of preparation this week by Bob Davey and his defensive staff along with Lou Holtz. They won them in these third and long situations, but this is where Stanley Jackson is just lethal on defenses. Jackson with play action fake and a roll. Pass is tipped and intercepted. 
intercepted. Picked off by Kenan Tatum after the ball was deflected. That's Ohio State's first turnover of 1996. And it's a big one deep in their own territory. Davies defense with a big play, a la the Texas game a week ago. Jackson, such an athlete, they try a roll. And you see Alton Maiden is out there, but it looked like 53. Lamont Bryant got his hand, knocked the ball away. Tatum comes up with the interception. Now Irish with great field position. The Ohio State 15. Whoops. Paulus will keep it and scrambles to the five-yard line. Busted. His least favorite thing is yep. a run, and on the busted play. Yep. Totally busted. He turns, and the guy he's supposed to hand it off to is, it looks to me like Mark Edwards went the wrong way because you had a guard pulling near side. I'm going to blame that on Mark Edwards, but what is it, a six-yard pickup? Let's put it in the playbook. That's actually 10, and it's first and goal Irish at the five. Denson. Passes to the outside and barely makes it back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Vrabel led the tacklers for Ohio State. Remember, 80% clip touchdowns for Ohio State. Notre Dame succeeding at a 57% rate. Second and goal. Ball at the five-yard line. Ohio State up six. Edwards, Mark Edwards, the Ohioan to the two, maybe the one. And Tom, I'll make this prediction right now. This is four down area. I, I think Lou Holtz understands that he is facing a very physical team. Psychologically, what it would do for his football team to uh, come up with a turnover, get the ball in the end zone. This is, this is four down area. Field goal means nothing. Third and goal, ball spotted at the Ohio State two. Edwards and Denson behind Paulus, who changes the play. Paulus to pass. Edwards wide open for the touchdown. Notre Dame turns it into six with a touchdown pass to Norwood, Ohio native Mark Edwards. Heads up call by Ron Paulus, who recognized the defensive formation and changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's something that uh, Lou Holtz has allowed Paulus the last couple of years. When he first came here, first year as a starter, he said, all I do is listen. Now I make my contributions. Sanson's extra point gives the Irish the lead. After the turnover, 15 yards in four plays. Edwards caught the touchdown pass, and it was sweet for the Norwood, Ohio native. Edwards catches the ball. This is one of the reasons he didn't go to Ohio State. He said, I didn't want to become a Buckeye because all I do is block. Well, here at Notre Dame, he runs, blocks, and catches. Hero of the moment for the Irish. See that haircut? Kids around South Bend ask for the Mark Edwards. <laughs> Actually, that's very long hair for Mark Edwards. Not many of them ask for Mark Edwards. <laughs> Sanson's kick. Stanley, who did the damage the first time, won't get a chance here. He took the opening kick 85 yards to set up the Ohio State score. Sanson buries it this time, and they'll start from the 20. Well, the Irish have another tough battle. They'll get a week off next week and then swing back into action in two weeks, and we'll be here as the Washington Huskies invade to take on fifth-ranked Notre Dame. And a year ago when they met, Notre Dame came from behind to win in the final moments, and Washington looking for revenge in two weeks. Washington and Notre Dame presented by the U.S. Postal Service here on NBC. For the first time this season, Ohio State trails in a football game. 6.05 left, first quarter. 7-6 Irish.
Jackson, a first down pass, swings it complete to the running back, Pearson, but on two nice moves and spins for 15 yards. Ivory Covington finally got a handle on him with help from Ron Cobbins. Boy, Pearson is elusive. Yeah, he sat behind Eddie George for two years at Ohio State. Now, George was not much of a receiver. This is one of the great attributes of Pepe Pearson. Catches the ball beautifully, although he bobbled that one. Great speed. They're just trying to figure out how best to use this guy that just scratched the surface on what he can do. First down, Buckeyes. They're on 35. Pearson. Block from the fullback Calhoun turned the corner and has 11 yards. Alton Maiden chased him down. It's a 12-yard gain and another Buckeye first down, Whoa. ripping off chunks of yardage. Yeah, they just folded the defensive corner, corner of the of the Notre Dame defense. Got around the corner and again, that's Orlando Pace's side. When in doubt, run to 75. First time they've trailed, but they're going to their strength. There's big Orlando Pace, and they admit it. We are a left-handed team, and why not behind that big guy? Orlando Pace, 6'6", 320, maybe more. Pearson's carried seven times now for 24 yards. Here he is again. Happy Pearson breaks three tackles. He's to the 40, and another Ohio State first down. And you just mentioned Orlando Pace at 6'5", 6'6", 340. He pulls. Look at him. Watch him out here. Watch what he does. Pulls, goes up through the hole. Watch this block. Man, just pulls the linebacker Cobbins back on his back. You and I could gain 12 <laughs> yards on that one. That was Cobbins. I, I wonder if he knows now what Shannon Lucid, that woman that spent so much time in space, felt when she came back down to earth. <laughs> felt like a whole world was falling on it. Jackson's pass on target complete to Dean Miller. Only his third reception of the season. It's good for 14 yards. Covington and Edison combined on the stop, and Ohio State marching relentlessly down the field. This is Bob Davies' biggest concern. There is so much they can do offensively. Straight drop back by Stanley Jackson. Excellent protection. Simple square in route inside the zone. Nice, easy completion. You even see the defensive backs of Notre Dame late there to make the tackle. Three tight end formation in this first down play as Jackson changes the call. Jackson's hit three of his first four passes. Pearson can't get away that time. Wrapped up by Alton Maiden, Kenan Tatum, and Ronaldo win. Ohio State's going to make a lot of yards against every defense. This is a stout Notre Dame defense, but this offensive line of Ohio State is interesting in that they really don't try to penetrate down the line of scrimmage. They get in front of the defensive lineman. They try to shield them as best they can and allow the running back to run wherever he finds a spot. Maybe trying to stop another quick Ohio State drive. Lou Holtz telling us they hope to get Ohio State in second and long, third and long. Jackson's pass flagged down and the catch made by Lumpkin. Corey Miner was all over him. I think the call will be interference. Didn't matter. Lumpkin made the grab anyway. His second catch of the season. Good for 23 yards if it holds. Yeah, Lumpkin 6'8". He's a basketball player. He's a, an electrical engineering major trying to follow the uh, pattern of Ricky Dudley. Here's the call. Pass interference on the defense. Penalties declined. First down. But Lumpkin at 6'8", 270, just releases down the field, and Corey Miner does a decent job in coverage, but this is beautifully thrown. And for a basketball player, that's a fine effort by this tight end. How about that for a target? Never wanting in praise of tight ends, I notice. And, uh, <laughs> John plans to play uh, hoops for the Buckeyes again this season. First and goal, Ohio State. Play action fake, and the touchdown easily to Calhoun. What's good for the Irish is good for the Buckeyes. They go with a pass to the fullback for six. Boys, a lot of offense on that drive. A lot of different stuff. Only the second reception of the season for Matt Calhoun as Jackson celebrates the touchdown pass. And 
and because of the missed extra point first time around, they are going to elect to go for two here. Also, their kicker is ailing, Josh Jackson, who hyperextended his right elbow. So a combination of factors here mean the Buckeyes will go for two. They call for the ball to be placed close to the left hash. Well, so far, this Ohio State uh, offense living up the billing. Three wide receiver set as they go for two. Pearson, one of the wide outs. Jackson keeps and can't get in. I don't know if that was a busted play. Oh, I, I think it was. I think that was a design play. Spread Wait. the defense and try to run the quarterback draw. Alton Maiden, Malvin Dansby, and Ronaldo Wynn would have none of it. Tom, you're going to see in this touchdown, I think the intended receiver is the tight end, but watch the way. See Barry hold him up? Yeah, hold so him. the outlet <laughs> is to the fullback, and Calhoun scores. I think hold was the operative word there. And here's the two-point conversion. I do believe this is a design play. Yeah, they tried to run a draw trap for the quarterback, and Alton Maiden's right there to stop it. So the two-point conversion fails. Jackson hit all four of his passes for 58 yards, including the touchdown on that Ohio State drive. And Tom, now there's pressure on Notre Dame's offense because now I think they understand that the Notre Dame defense is going to struggle against this Ohio State offense all day, so they can't make mistakes. They got to take advantage of every opportunity. Might be one of those games where you've got to outscore your opponent. Stamp to kick for Ohio State. Back on top, 12-7. Mosley, the deep man for Notre Dame. Emmett Mosley from the 15. Short kick. Mosley, a pretty nice return. Crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line. 17-yard kickoff return. Well, amongst the many celebrities here today, Jenny McCarthy, she'll be a guest star on the NBC comedy Wings coming up this Wednesday. A Chicago native, she's got the Notre Dame jacket on. Uh, you may recognize her as a member of uh, the MTV show, Singled Out. She'll be on Wings this Wednesday on NBC. Irish first down at the 32. Take the reverse. Paulus got rid of it somehow. Mosley got away from one man, looks for a block, can't get it. Works his way back to the 30-yard line. Disaster narrowly averted by Ron Paulus. I don't know how he saw the pass rush. But he ducks his head. Should have been a sack. It's a big reverse. He's looking for somebody down the field. Some quarterbacks just have the presence to feel the pressure. This is Matt Finkus that somehow misses him. Second and 12 for the Irish. Again, Paulus checking off. Ryan Miller, linebacker, shows blitz. Not much on the ground as Randy Kinder gets the call, and Ryan Miller gets a piece of the tackle. Tom, I think Ohio State is blitzing formations. There's Fred Puggage, the uh, defensive coordinator. And when you see... Uh, when Notre Dame's got two receivers out here, then you're going to see all these guys put pressure on the quarterback because one of the things that Notre Dame has not done yet this year is throw down the field to the wide receivers. So they're going to put as much pressure on Paulus immediately as they can. Only 16 yards for Notre Dame so far. Ty Howard and no flag. I think there was contact between both of them. Rocky Nelson made a mistake. As opposed to continuing to run down the field, he kind of turned around to face the quarterback. You see the pump by Paulus. Now watch, you're going to see Rocky Nelson almost turn around here. See, if he keeps running, he's got a better chance to make the reception. And if anything, Nelson was the first to push off in that situation, I think. 
Paulus has hit only three of his first seven passes. Smith's third punt of the first quarter. David Boston is deep. David Boston. Whoa, barely got a hand on it. Now with control of the ball, but nowhere to go. Shakes one man and does a pretty good job of advancing to the 24-yard line. Nine-yard return after Smith had boomed it 54 yards. Ron Cobbins, a special team tackle. Follow Notre Dame football online at NBC.com slash sports. Game-by-game -game recaps, player bios, team information, and news about the Irish. The only online site to follow Notre Dame football, NBC.com slash sports. I, I do that. That uh, internet show, there's a lot of pretenders out there. you got to look for a while before you find the real Notre Dame internet site. 139 left, opening quarter, 12-7, Buckeye lead. Pearson. Didn't appear to be much there, and no. somehow he scratches out five yards. Yeah, that's a great point. They had him stopped at the point of attack. He keeps trying. The, the offensive line of Ohio State finishes blocks very, very well. They don't just hit and then go to their knees. They keep pressing, pressing on the defensive lineman, so it always gives that running back another option, another little angle to run. And the other big factor is in this offensive line, four of the five starters are starting together for the second year in a row for Ohio State. Huge advantage. Pearson stopped for the blitzing linebacker, Corey Miner. Run stopping blitz by Miner. Well, I think Notre Dame is going to have to do that. You almost saw him cheating at the line of scrimmage here. Stanley Jackson tried to come with an audible, but again, a nice slant run by the defensive line. Pearson runs right to the slant. Corey Miner there to assist, if not make the initial hit. Third and four. This is the situation Lou Holtz had hoped for. Jackson, pass deflected at the line of scrimmage by Mel Dansby. Dansby, the young man that used to sell soft drinks at Legion Field in Birmingham, the man that told Bear Bryant no. Comes to Notre Dame and deflects that pass. Thought his career was over. <laughs> Had neck surgery. And he was uh, looking forward to facing Orlando Pace. He doesn't make a lot of penetration here. Just stopped dead in his tracks by Pace, but does get his hand up, deflect the ball away. Ohio State must punt. One of the uh, influential men in Birmingham that Dansby was acquainted with had all the Bear Bryant memorabilia and said, in effect, you're saying no to Bear if you don't go to Alabama. <laughs> and he said no to Bear. Not a very good-looking punt, but not blocked as the first one was and downed at about the 37-yard line. 43-yard punt as the first quarter comes to an end. Ohio State leading Notre Dame 12-7 will return to Notre Dame after these messages and a word from your local station as we begin the start on first down Irish. Ground to Randy Kinder, who makes it to Randy the 30-yard line, tackled by Andy Katzenmoyer, the, the middle linebacker of the Buckeyes. Kinder takes the ball to the 29. Not much through the air for Notre Dame, not much at all, as a matter of fact, wow. in the first quarter of play. Yeah, would they have a 15-yard scoring drive? 19 yards total for the quarter, 15 they get on that drive, and he is the only first down for Notre Dame in the first quarter, Ron Wallace. Paulus still has it. Hit hard. And he'll be uh, stacked up. Forward progress stops and the whistle's blow. It didn't look right either. Nope. The option did not look smooth. And uh, Paulus and Coach Holtz both telling us they expected to use the option today. In fact, Holtz said that he was going to call on Paulus to carry the ball. And if he averaged four yards of carry at the end of the game, then they would have a chance of winning. Uh, but I, I think the uh, option was designed to come this way. Paul has turned the wrong way, so he's made yards, but both on broken plays. Third and four for Notre Dame. Mosley back into the game. And Pete Kriplevich in a tight end. Pitch. 
Oh, that's a great job. Fumble, and Ohio State has it. Randy Kinder fumbled the football, and the Buckeyes recover on the Irish 35-yard line. Tom, again, great support by an Ohio State safety, and again, it's Damon Moore, number 13. He has been a huge factor on the run here already for Ohio State. They try to pull the center, but Mark Edwards is the leader. Watch 13 show up. Gives Kinder no place to run. Helmet right on the ball. Oh, I'm not so sure he was down. That looked to me like a, a knee may have been on the turf. It'll go, though, as a Notre Dame fumble. Another turnover. That's what plagued the Irish in their opener against Vanderbilt. Holtz worked diligently on it, and now Joe Germain, second quarterback for Ohio State on the field. He's been good, hitting 72% of his passes. He scored touchdowns on six of his nine possessions. They stopped Pepe Pearson at the line of scrimmage, hit in his tracks by Corey Miner and Laron Cobbins. The thing about Joe Germain, too, Jackson did an excellent job in the first quarter. Joe Germain was not recruited out of high school, but his father absolutely idolizes Notre Dame. Just his gaga about Notre Dame. His dad's a cowboy. So Joe Germain shows up last year at Ohio State, and he was the scout team quarterback. He was Ron Paulus for Ohio State last year in preparation for their game. First time Jermaine has ever made a road trip for the Buckeyes. First time he's ever traveled, much less played. Changing the call. He's hit his last nine passes in a row. Make it ten as Miller catches it for a short game, driven back by Ivory Covington and the Notre Dame pursuit. These are two completely different quarterbacks that Ohio State has. Jermaine is more of a pocket thrower. He's a little more mechanical. He's not going to run. He's not going to be the threat to run like Stanley Jackson. Uh, but uh, John Cooper told us, look, we had this guy in the summer and last spring, and every time we put him in a scrimmage, he just shone. said he won't go away, so we got to use him. Jermaine, the former uh, baseball pitcher, drafted by the Colorado Rockies. Passed it up, thought his best chance was football. Chase from the pocket. And got it away. Close to being intercepted. It'll be incomplete. Ronaldo Wynn was bearing down on Joe Germain. And then Tatum had a chance to intercept. And he waited for it. If he, if he moves towards the football, he makes the interception. Watch the bottom of the screen. He's flushed originally by Burt Berry. Then Wynn chases him. Now watch. If, see, he waits for it. Oh, it was tipped. Let, let me take that back. If Tatum doesn't tip it, it's probably intercepted. So a 48-yard field goal attempt upcoming. Dan Stoltz is on to kick after earlier Josh Jackson was shaken up. So how about this? Your backup kicker is going to try a long field goal. The regular man, Josh Jackson there, hyperextended his right elbow. We'll take a break after the Notre Dame timeout. back to Notre Dame as Dan Stoltz, a true freshman for Ohio State, is going to attempt a field goal. The young man missed the first two weeks of the season. He has Graves disease. That is the uh, thyroid disorder that former President George Bush and uh, Gail Devers, the Olympic 100-meter champion, has and has overcome. And Stoltz is on to try a field goal after the regular kicker, Josh Jackson, was shaken up in the first quarter. See John Cooper walk out there with it. There, there's the injured kicker. John Cooper walks out. Hey, I got great confidence in you. Just like practice. Well, let's see. This kick will be 48 yards. Stoltz blocked. So once again, Davy in the Notre Dame defense and special teams make a big play. Blocking the uh, Stoltz kick that really never got airborne. Yeah, that was very, very low. Benny Gilbo, 39, I think the man that got it. Certainly looks like the snap is good. Gilbo gets up. Actually hits him in the helmet. <laughs> Not much elevation on that kick. Uh, uh, Davies saying, back off, get away from the football. Now, for this game to be 12-7 with what little offense Notre Dame has produced, 
absolutely remarkable. And the Irish will try to get that offense cranked up with a first down at their own 32, trailing by five. Edwards. And the Irish again find the going tough inside. Let's go to John Dockery. You know, Tom, um, Ron Paulus during that last time out when he was on the bench was talking to his receivers, Nelson and Johnson, and suggesting to them that maybe they should run the right routes because Ohio State was playing a lot of man-to-man -man and they got to run right routes and better routes and they weren't doing it. Paulus was not real happy. Suggesting. Suggesting, yes. Edwards and Denson in the eye. Option. Paulus keeps and breaks free into Ohio State territory down to the 45-yard line. A 22-yard ramble by the reluctant runner, Ron Paulus. I think the reason this worked is that he runs so few times on the option that when he faked the pitch, the defensive back went for Denson. Watch this fake. Right there, a little hesitation, and he cuts back up inside. Yeah, it looked like Ty Howard was the guy that he faked. Nice pickup, first down Notre Dame. Champion with a pretty good downfield block. Paulus, three carries, 36 yards. That's what Lou Holtz wanted. As uh, Autry Denson files inside the 40-yard line of Ohio State, tackled by Greg Belisari. Uh, I was about to make the observation on that last drive that Notre Dame had done a very poor job on first down. So many times they had had second eight, second nine, second ten, second twelve. Nice first down pick up here. Second and four. Draw play handoff to Denson. And Autry Denson has a Notre Dame first down. Six yard gain on the play and Denson rapidly developing into one of the elite runners in college football. We've seen some spectacular moves the last couple of games. Yeah, considering that last year when we were here, he was the defensive back and they moved him to uh, offense and then the season started, he was a wide receiver and they moved him to running back. He has turned out to be extremely durable. He can carry the ball a great deal and has excellent hands. He did 158 yards last week against Texas. Huge. Opened the season at wide receiver, and then Robert Farmer fumbled at Vanderbilt, and he went back to tailback. Paulus has to throw it away, being chased by the Ohio State rush, led by Luke Fickle. He was going to go downfield to Malcolm Johnson, number 80. Johnson was running the deep route, but Johnson at 6'5", slipped, fell down. There's Johnson, the uh, co-leading receiver on the team. But that's misleading. Most of his catches have been short, run for a lot. Malcolm Johnson from Washington, D.C., and Shannon Springs from Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, not pleased with Springs talking, they say. Here's Crip Levich, bottom of the screen with Denson in the slot on second and 10. Middle screen, the fullback Edwards, down to the 28-yard line. This is go ahead. Paulus is hit four of eight now. This is a, an aspect of the Lou Holtz offense. You don't know what's coming next. He is so diverse when it comes to the offense. Difficult for the offense to learn everything, to know everything, but doubly difficult for the defense to read every formation and try to have some idea what's coming next. Defender intercepted. Let's see. I believe it was Luke Fickle. Fickle, the senior from Westerville, Ohio, with the interception, the four year starter. Tom, this is a zone blitz. Watch the nose tackle, 99 drop out, right where Malcolm Johnson is going to be. Johnson was not even looking for the ball. Interception, Ohio State. Place on that last play. Watch what happens. Johnson crosses, Kraplevich crosses, and Fickle drops right back in here for the interception. There's a zone blitz or a blitz zone. Paulus reads it correctly, but the umpire's there, the defensive lineman is there, two receivers are there, and Ohio State comes up with the football, and Paulus not happy. 
second trip to the sideline where he was upset after the second Notre Dame turnover. Jermaine still at quarterback, hands to Pearson, got around the corner, and then the pursuit catches up to him at the 30-yard line. Five-yard gain, Gilbo and Cobbins bang him down, but again, Pearson with some damage as he gets to the outside. He's carried 13 times for 46 yards. And time and time, again, you can see his quickness. I mean, he gets that ball, bam, two steps, he is outside the defense. 12-7 Buckeyes. Approaching eight and a half, in the remaining second quarter. Jermaine with a fake and a pass completion. Lumpkin banged down by Gilbo, short of the first down. Corey Miner was coming, putting the pressure on Jermaine, and then Gilbo with a big hit. As you see, the other scores and games underway this afternoon. Western with a win over the Indiana Hoosiers. One thing Ohio State has not done well is convert the third down, and they're facing a third and three. Actually closer to two yards for the first down. Lumpkin, the motion man. Short drop, Jermaine fires, and a nice catch made by Demetrius Stanley. Pass was behind him. Stanley went back to get it, then was hit by Ivory Covington. Gain of 11 and an Ohio State first down. That was a beautiful adjustment by Demetrius Stanley. This baby gets there in a hurry. Nice passing lane here. I mean, a three-step drop. That is beautifully done. There's athleticism for you. Senior from Worthington, Ohio, Demetrius Stanley. Gets the call. Gain of two or three yards. Kenan Tatum and Ronaldo win combine on the stop. Here's a look at Matt Keller, redshirt freshman from Mason, Ohio. His 11th carry of the season. Former uh, Moeller High School. He and uh, Rob Murphy, another Ohio State player, starting left guard, were teammates at Motor High School in uh, Cincinnati. Mason, a suburb of Queen City. Northern suburb. Play action fake. Jermaine, sideline open. Stanley, first down, Ohio State to the Irish 40. Covington and Rossum gave him plenty of room, and it goes for 13 yards and a first down, and Jermaine still has the hot hand through the air. Now, with the inexperience at the defensive backfield for Notre Dame, not much man coverage, and you see Covington giving a great big cushion. This is a zone run by Notre Dame, and Ohio State just takes advantage of it. Looked like Buster Tillman was open, too. Jermaine had his choice. First down, Buckeyes, Irish 40. Six and a half left. 12-7, Ohio State. Pearson, a stop and go, got him free, and then nearly broke another one. That's an 11-yard gain by Peppy Pearson. His mom named him after one of her favorite television characters, Peppy. Now watch him give him the leg and then take it away. Right there, he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Just, his leg is just, he just, it's almost like it's dead. Gathers himself. Good balance again, keeps heading forward. But you know, he's got a lot to live up to uh, after Eddie George and what Eddie George did for Ohio State last year. He is welcome to the pass. Mom had him when he was only 15 years old. He says his mother, Euclid, is his best friend. He's in the tailback spot with the pitch and a big pole in front of him. Pearson! Out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Jarvis Edison ran him out as Peppy Pearson reels off 18. Well, that was a great lead block by the fullback. And again, they're running to the left side. There is nothing out here when Pearson finally picks up this ball. Nice full block between the guard and tackle. Look at that fullback block. Outstanding. And in that great speed by Pearson, he is getting it in big bunches. And Ohio State knocking on the Irish door again with the eighth play of the drive coming up.
Pearson made a hesitation move and again got a couple of yards when he could have been stopped in the backfield. Ivory Covington finally grabs him around the ankles. Boy, he can stop and start without uh, any effort, it would seem. Now 16 carries, 75 yards. Doesn't seem to be tired either, does he? Keep giving it to me. I don't care. Why not? Approaching 100 yards in the first half with 5.35 left. Pearson again. This time the Irish defense hits him after a short game. Dropped at the five by Ronaldo win and Burt Ferry. Again now, quoting Lou Holtz, this is the situation he wants Ohio State in. He wants him to throw on third down and he wants him to throw down on the goal line. So a tough choice here for Joe Hollis, the offensive coordinator of Ohio State. Do I run? Do I throw? This is a tough spot for any offense. Pearson, I formation. Third and three. And timeout, Ohio State. Fans doing their best to make it tough on the Buckeyes down back to the Ohio State offense. And here they are threatening again. A little togetherness in the huddle as they face a third and three from the Irish five on the tenth play of the drive. Tom, this would be an easier call if Stanley Jackson were a quarterback than Joe Germain. Germain, not much of a runner. Stanley in motion. Germain pitches to Pearson. And he's trapped and stopped behind the line. Great penetration by the strong safety, Benny Gilbo, to grab Pearson and wait for help. The Irish again come up with a clutch play and prevent a third down Ohio State conversion. And they ran right. Ohio State goes right. I guess it's just to keep themselves honest. And uh, Josh Jackson, the regular kicker, despite the hyperextended right elbow, is on to attempt the field goal. 24 yards. It's good. So Jackson, despite that stiff right arm heavily taped after he hyperextended it, gets his rhythm and kicks the field goal through. He's two for two on field goal attempts. But here was the big play by the Irish defense. Yeah, you saw Corey Miner, number four of Notre Dame, make Pearson go back inside. And there was the stop. 15-7, Ohio State. We'll be back. I'm Tom Hammond, Bob Crumpy, John Dockery from Notre Dame Stadium. Audrey Denson, the deepest man for Notre Dame now as Stamp is set to kick it off for Ohio State. There's Denson standing at about the four-yard line. Puts the foot to it and Denson from the goal line. Audrey Denson. Kinder gave him a block and he broke free for a moment. Makes it out to the 35 yard line. A 34 yard officially return. It had been Mosley deepest for uh, Notre Dame and Denson doing a good job there. Well, coming up tomorrow on the NFL on NBC, we'll hear from some of the biggest names in football. It's been a newsworthy week. We'll have Jeff George's reaction to his suspension by the Falcons. We'll also hear from Dan Marino and Jimmy Johnson. Miami off this week, but they have to deal with life without Marino. who suffered that fractured ankle, uh, fractured ankle Monday night against the Colts. Ahmad Rashad will have a visit with a man who has a new home, Jerome Bettis in Pittsburgh. Denson diving for a couple of yards. And also uh, coming up tomorrow on uh, the NFL on NBC at noon Eastern time, uh, Troy Aikman talk about the desperate times in Dallas. Cowboys, you know, just one and three going into Monday night's game in Philadelphia. And Bob Costas will talk to Captain Comeback Jim Harbaugh. He's on top of the NFL mountain right now. His Colts with a week off and are four and zero. Oh. All that coming up tomorrow, the NFL on NBC at noon Eastern time. Levich, the tight end, flex to the bottom of the screen. Hand off to Denson. Nowhere to go. Trapped for the ankles. Nice tackle made 
behind the line of scrimmage by Greg Belisari. Uh, several things very obvious in this first half for Notre Dame's offense, and one of them is the lack of receiving. Today, running back, uh, one for minus two yards. The Irish have three first downs. Ron Paulus has two of them on runs. So wide receivers have one catch so far for Notre Dame. They have amassed under 70 yards in total offense. Paulus chased, unloads, and throws away. And again, Notre Dame sputters, especially in the passing game. Greg Bellasari was coming and bearing down on Ron Paulus. He had to throw it away. And another punt upcoming. That's the fourth time today the pressure has forced him to unload and throw the ball away. Again, facing that third and long situation, which is a recurring theme for Notre Dame in this first half. Ohio State is doing an excellent job of pressuring him, and they're paying their no respect for the uh, Notre Dame wideouts. Wallace has got nobody to throw it to. Smith's fourth punt, and Springs awaits it. Springs from the 19. Sean Springs, there's a flag down as he's caught from behind by Laron Cobbins at the 45-yard line. It was a 27-yard return. And we'll check the flags. Apparently against Ohio State. Illegal block in the back by uh, the Buckeyes on Kevin Coretta in coverage. First accepted penalty today. Illegal block in the back on the offense during the run back, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Ohio State hasn't made many mistakes today. Well, that's number 42. Yeah, you see the push in the back for the penalty, but actually the long field for the Ohio State offense hasn't really seemed to bother them that much. <laughs> and uh, this possession, uh, John Cooper's getting his two talented freshman receivers in the game, David Boston and Michael Wiley. They've been sensational. Wiley, three touchdowns against Rice. Boston, three against Pitt. And Stanley Jackson back at quarterback. Play action fake. Jackson still has it. Maiden chases him, and the ball is not caught. Incomplete, despite Boston's diving attempt. Alton Maiden, number 42, applying the pressure on Jackson. Jackson back in the game after Joe Germain had been at the controls for a while, and uh, hard to separate them. They both done a good job. Yeah, nine of 13 out of the two of them. Over 100 yards. The one interception Jackson threw was converted into a touchdown by Notre Dame. Their only score. Ohio State leading 15-7. Hand off to Pearson. Got by Rawson. And he breaks free to the 40-yard line before Cobbins can chase him down. 23-yard gain by Pepe Pearson is close to 100 in the first half against Notre Dame's vaunted defense. He has 101 yards now on 19 carries. And you're starting to see this Notre Dame defense stand up at the line of scrimmage and stop. That's a sign of fatigue. Uh, the Notre Dame offense in the first half has done so little, the Notre Dame defense is being expended fully here in the first half. Both defenses among the college football leaders coming in, but Notre Dame being shredded here by the Buckeyes. Pass complete to Wiley, bounces free of the tacklers and takes it down to the 29-yard line. This kid's amazing. He was recruited as a running back. He was moved to whiteout the first three times he touched the ball, three touchdowns. Nothing to it. And he just runs a nice little in route here. The defensive back slips. Great strength. Edison is a big kid, number 30. Bounces right off of him, keeps the play going. 31-yard gain to the red shirt, or to the true freshman from Spring Valley, California. Matt Keller, short gain up the middle with Maiden and Dansby collapsing him. Total yardage advantage continues to mount for the Buckeyes. 
this is total control. I mean, Ohio State's taking advantage of the defense, and uh, Lou Holtz can't find anything for his offense to do. This is, you need balance when you play big games. You're looking for balance and field position, balance and turnovers, and balance offense to defense. Notre Dame has none of those today. And uh, apparently timeout is taken. I didn't see the signal. Well, at the controls of the Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron, Captain Aaron Jenkins today. Richard Morkel is the cameraman. Goodyear blimp cruising about a thousand feet over Notre Dame Stadium today on this cloudy northern Indiana afternoon. We're told that Ohio State now took that timeout, so they have one up. Well, Peppy Pearson. He's paid his dues behind Heisman winner Eddie George for a couple of years. In high school, he backed up Robert uh, Smith at Euclid High School in Ohio. So he learned uh, at the hands of some masters, and he's continuing this tradition. Look at that. 15 straight games with 100-plus yards rushing. George just, he had three, Eddie George had 384 carries last year for Ohio State. Can you imagine that? I mean, it, you got to give it to him a lot. Carries in 12 days. But why not? Why not? Short drop, pass complete. The catch is made by Pearson, and he's stopped at the one. They put Pearson wide to the right. They got it to him through the air this time, and it's good for 26 yards. Pearson has caught only two passes prior to today. Again, soft coverage by the defensive backfield. You see two defenders bump into each other, and then that great speed. Russell, number 15, kind of takes the legs out from underneath him, and Edison gets him down just short of the goal line. Nearly 150 yards in total offense by Pepe Pearson in the first half. He's at the tailback spot of the eye. Here's Pearson. Easy touchdown. This is a juggernaut. This is an offensive juggernaut. This is not a bad Notre Dame defense. Well, the kind of day that Pearson and the offensive line of Ohio State are having will make any defense look bad. And they have been virtually unstoppable here in the first half. Jackson for the extra point attempt. Makes it 22-7 Ohio State. Second touchdown of the game for Pepe Pearson, who's gained 104 yards rushing and two catches for 42 yards. Again, we got to give credit to Keller, the, the fullback. I mean, again, he does an excellent job on the lead block right there. Just knocks the feet right out from underneath Ivory Covington. I mean, how about that? He catches the screen, he catches the little slant pass, and then they give it to him in the backfield. These guys are for real. The first two weeks of the season, they may have played Jello. They are not playing Jello today, and they are ripping this Notre Dame defense up. Now, as you look at Pearson, the junior from Euclid, Ohio, prep all American there at Euclid, and at 4,300 career rushing yards, and the offensive lineman Juan Porter and company. Yes, they've been doing the job. That was another quick one, wasn't it? 122. So now if you're Notre Dame, as Orlando Pace uh, has a little celebration too, uh, you get away from the game plan and start to uh, throw the ball around? I don't think you have to, because I, I think you might get Ron Paulus hurt. There's that much pressure on him. Kick by Stamp, taken by Denson. Actually not by Denson, by the up man uh, Farmer. Farmer driven back short of the 20 yard line. A 10 yard return only with Mike Burden making the special teams tackle. Don't forget at halftime, we'll have the Prudential update for you. We'll return to New York where Greg Gumbel and Chris Collinsworth will have college scores and highlights. We'll also take a look at Notre Dame quarterback Ron Paulus. You talk about living your life under a microscope. Ron Paulus has 
had all of that. Uh, still one of our favorite athletes to talk to, Ron Paulus. Faith first down pass. Paulus protection here, and he has a man wide open. It's Malcolm Johnson with a first down reception across the 35-yard line. Finally. Find a receiver down the field open, but of course Ohio State is in the prevent defense here with 41 ticks to go in the first half. Not surprising. You see the timeouts remaining. Ball is sacked. Ohio State's defense led by Winfield Garnett that time manhandling that big offensive line of Notre Dame. Timeout Irish with 28 seconds left. And Malcolm Johnson at 6'5". Now watch, he does not come back for the ball, stands there, springs, almost recovers enough to knock the ball away. Irish have taken their final timeout with 20 seconds remaining. And they're going to measure to see if Johnson... Has again has to scramble free no receivers plenty of time but nobody open he'll run it again and he'll be out of bounds at the 44 yard line of Ohio State with 12 seconds left Boy, Tom his receivers are not no timeouts and only 12 seconds till halftime Notre Dame down 22 7 Complete intended for Malcolm Johnson. Six seconds left in rousing fashion. Paula sacked again. Mike Vrabel with an Ohio State sack of Paulus to end the first half. A first half dominated by the Buckeyes, who lead 22-7. Let's go to John Dockery, who's with Coach Lou Holtz. Doc? Coach, uh, you said your top priority before the game was to shut down the run. You haven't been able to do it. What's the problem? Well, they're, they're awfully good, and we've tackled very poorly, particularly in the secondary. I think we've made some good plays. I think we're playing as well as we can up front, but they get a little pass or get on the perimeter, and we just miss so many tackles, and let's give them credit. we got to tackle better. You can't play like this. And on offense, uh, they've controlled the line of scrimmage. I give them credit. They're big and strong. We haven't been able to protect the passer, yet we haven't been able to get any movement. Anything different in the second half you can do offensively to get the ball moving and get it to the wide receivers? Well, I would like to think we would do something differently. I sure don't want to have another half like this. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> all right, as uh, Ohio State's Mike Vrabel becomes the Buckeyes' all-time sack. It'll be a great half here of uh, football. I think they'll, they'll, no question, they'll be they'll come out here fired up. The first series here in the third quarter, in my opinion, is very, very important to us. Good luck to you, Coach. Thank you very much. So, uh, John Cooper telling John Dockery that that first series could be decisive. Uh, speaking of decisive, the first half decisively in favor of the Buckeyes. Uh, looking at the way they dominated that half, you're surprised the score is only 22 seconds. I couldn't agree with you more. You're absolutely right. Uh, if everybody wondered what was going to happen, Pepe Pearson, the running back for Ohio State, certainly made a statement offensively. That's his first score. And then watch this block by the fullback, Calhoun. Pearson, after catching a slant, runs the ball in the end zone for a second score. On the other side of the ball, Ron Paulus has had no time to throw. They have 51 yards rushing. Paulus has 28. He's lucky he can stand up to start this second half. He has had nothing but harassment by the Ohio State football defense. There is nothing good there for Notre Dame. The total yards, 93, 283 yards for Ohio State. And actually, that's below their first half average in the first two games. This is a dominant performance by the Buckeyes. And third quarter will get underway with Ohio State kicking off. Stamp to kick. And the ball taken at about the seven-yard line by Rossum. And 
Alan Rossum, the speedy man who took it 99 yards against Purdue, cranks out 20 on that kickoff return. Here's a, an example of how the way things have gone. The two premier running backs of each team and the numbers heavily in favor of the Buckeyes, Pepe Pearson. And that's four yards first half. And Tom, I think that's the total difference between the two teams. Uh, Notre Dame cannot run the football. Ohio State's run it at will. Unless Ohio State helps Notre Dame here by putting the ball on the ground, Irish are in for a long half. Which is the story of last year's game in Columbus when Notre Dame led at halftime, although not by this big a margin. Denson made a nice cutback, and he got about eight yards on first down. Nice cut by Autry Denson. An eight-yard run on first down. That'll give him some flexibility. He's carried seven times now for 21 yards in what has been a lackluster offensive first half for the Irish. Have five, three downs, and out in the first half for Notre Dame. Hoping for better results here in the second half, trailing 22-7. That's Nelson at the bottom of the screen. Mosley in motion. And Edwards cracked hard as he got the football. Fell forward for a yard. Lucky to get that. Center of the Buckeye line. Met him at the pass. Mike Vrabel was right there. And uh, on the last play of the first half, it was Vrabel, the senior from Akron, who became Ohio State's all-time sack leader. defense of Ohio State returned nine of 11 starters. They put the, the freshman kid in there, Katz and Moyer. He's certainly done the job. They're going to be short. They stopped the clock for the change to come out and measure for the first down. Foot short or so. John Cooper telling John Dockery that this could be a decisive series, and so he sends big Orlando Pace, the offensive tackle, in on this short yardage situation. This is a common occurrence for the Buckeyes. In fact, uh, Pace was on the field when Notre Dame scored its only touchdown. His career in the NFL is going to be an offensive <laughs> left tackle. Might be the first player taking the draft. Huh? Peyton Manning is sort of the predicted man, but Pace could be right there when the draft uh, is held. If he has the season expected, he's uh, likely to forego his senior season and come out after this his junior year. Considered it a little bit after his sophomore year. Irish have converted only one of seven third downs. Split backs, Denson and Edwards. Sneak by Paulus, flags down. I believe they caught Ohio State offside. First down either way. Paulus uh, varying his cadence and catching the Buckeyes offside. Offside on the defense, five yards, first down. And you were mentioning all the great first round draft choices. Look what Ohio State's produced in the last three seasons. Terry Glenn, Dudley George last year, Galloway Stringer Powell, Dan Wilkinson was the first pick in the draft in 1994. So re replacing all that talent yeah. and showing no signs of uh, losing effectiveness. And Pace uh, likely to be the next. Irish with a first down after the penalty. Quick drop. Paulus pumps. He goes open. down the sideline. Mosley's wide open. Had to wait for it. And the defense will catch up. But it's a big play to the 22-yard line of Ohio State as Ty Howard caught him. But the play covers 34 yards as Mosley came wide open. Tom, this is the same play they ran in the first quarter, and Mosley dropped. It's an out and up. And you're right, Howard, number two, is a little late slip. Ball is thrown very well by Ron Paulus. Don Cooper said, first drive, third quarter, key. Well, I think the Irish understand that, too. They have a first down at the Ohio State 23. Denson. Ohio State just jammed the offensive line back on its heels to stop Denson for a gain of only two. Greg Belisari, the outside linebacker, who was the middle backer before Andy Katzenmoyer signed, moved outside because they wanted to get their three best backers on the field, and he... Uh, Along with Katzenmoyer and the other linebacker, Ryan Miller, have been formidable. 
Oh, interesting to note, too, that Belisari and, and Miller, the two linebackers, are both pre-med majors. They've been operating on uh, <laughs> Notre Dame offense all the first half, and uh, <laughs> they finally trying to get something going here. Paulus, complete, catch made by Nelson, and a first down at the 11 of Ohio State. Sean Springs defending, but Nelson beat him. I don't know who did the, the most yelling in the Notre Dame locker room at halftime, but at least it's uh, carried through to this opening drive of the third quarter. A little better protection, receivers running a little better patterns, and positive results. And play calling may be a little less predictable as well. Yes, good point. Sixth play of the drive. Johnson and Mosley, two receivers, bottom of the screen. Paulus changing the play. Denson slipped, regained his footing, cracked down inside the 10 to perhaps the seven yard line. After 158 yards rushing last week against Texas, it's a pretty stout defense for Ohio State to shut down Audrey Denson the way they have to this point in this game. It is a stellar performance by this veteran Ohio State defense. Two tight end formation on this second down play, Kriplevich and Coretta. Paulus already has exceeded his first half passing total with 44 yards. Option. Paulus, nothing that time. His, key, his keeping on the option had been the best play for Notre Dame in the first half. Mike Brable stayed with Paulus that time. Uh, Brable did a great job, too. He fights off the block, stays down the line, recognizes immediately that it's the option. Brable's right down in here. You're going to see him just fight off the block. He comes, he, he beats the guard out there. Boy, that, that is a great job. He's blocked by two guys, beats both, and makes the tackle. Third down for the Irish, third and six. They can make a first down without scoring. Third and long has been disaster for them. At the Buckeye seven. Denson hit immediately. Garnett never gave him a chance. Ball got there, so did Winfield Garnett. It's fourth down. And uh, Lou Holtz sending his field goal unit on to the field on fourth and seven. Jim Sanson's hit four or five, including the game winner against Texas last week. The young man from Arizona whose high school was too poor to afford a practice field. They practiced on a community playground where he kicked between palm trees. That's what he visualizes here, he says, when he needs a tough kick, and he boots that one through. Again, this is a big physical offense, but physical defense on Ohio State certainly matches up well. Tom Hammond, Bob Trumpy, John Dockery, Notre Dame Stadium, where the Irish on their first possession of the second half have scored a field goal to cut the margin to 22-10. Jim Sanson to kick off for Notre Dame. And Stanley feels the short kickoff at the 16-yard line. Demetrius Stanley, another good return. He got things started with an 85-yard job to open the game. This one covers 18 before the tackle was made by Bobby Howard. Don't forget tonight, the kickoff of NBC's all-new Saturday lineup with Dark Skies, then The Pretender and Profiler. Three shows guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seat. NBC's new Saturday trilogy, or perhaps better named Trilogy. That's tonight, starting at 8, 7 Central, here on NBC. Two Ohio State quarterbacks have been very productive today, and Stanley Jackson gets the call to open the third quarter. Buckeyes have it on their own 33. Happy Pearson. Again, unstoppable behind that big offensive line, and a gain of seven or eight yards before Melvin Dansby pushed back from his defensive line position, makes the tackle of Pearson, who now has earned, gained 111 yards. Yeah, that was a nice pull. 
guard pull by Ohio State just blew out the right side of the uh, Notre Dame defense. 111 yards today. Of course, you must point out he didn't get that much playing time in those uh, first two contests uh, after halftime. Quickly up the middle, Matt Calhoun has the first down for Ohio State as he crosses the 45 to the 46-yard line. Tom, you see that push? I mean, the, the middle of this offensive line, I said earlier, they don't fire out, but watch the shoving here. Great pull. Rob Murphy with a nice little trap. Look at that. Four or five yards down the field before there's any contact with a fullback. This offensive line, one of the best I've seen in years. First down play. Pitch to Pearson. Waiting for the blocking to develop. And again, six yards into Irish territory. And you, know, and you know, Tom, this is a big offensive line. You've got 300 pounders there, but you you don't generally see 300 pounders down on players' legs when they pull. That was a perfect example again. A guard pulls, and if a, a cut block is necessary out on the corner, a cut block is made. These guys, they... There's something. I mean, they're going to beat up a lot of defenses before this season's over. Pearson at a wide out spot now. Calhoun is the only setback. Short drop. And that short hopped his intended receiver, Demetrius Stanley, as Jackson misfires on a second down pass. And he admits it's on me. I, my fault. But, I mean, you mentioned you know, Pearson hasn't played a lot of uh, football so far this year, this entire unit. I mean, none of them played in the second half of the first two games. Irish have done a pretty good job of stopping third down conversions. You saw third and four overall, two of seven. Blitz comes, and Stanley is able to get away and nearly caught. LaRon Cobbins had him but could not stop. Jackson from letting the pass go. Tatum was there too, but a big defensive play by the Irish forcing an Ohio State punt. That, that play was a mess to begin with. The snap was, was late. Watch when the ball is snapped, nobody moves. Right. And then Cobbins number six gets him, can't quite get him down, and why Jackson throws this down the middle is beyond me. Very fortunate that ball's not picked off. Notre Dame defense with a big play, and now they'll get the football back. Is it down out of the end zone? Yes, perfect coverage by Ohio State. 47-yard Bartholomew punt down inside the one-yard line. Antoine Winfield with great coverage to keep the ball out of the end zone. Notre Dame. 99 yards away. In stadium, Ohio State with its first trip here in 60 years. Wait, 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 Third quarter, 7.45 left. Ohio State leading 22 to 10. Notre Dame with its second possession of the second half. They scored a field goal the first time they had the ball. Now they take over at their own one. off a couple of would-be tacklers gets maybe three yards before Mike Rabel puts him down for good this Ohio State defense well they fill and they fill well those inside linebackers especially that Katzen Moyer kid just 18 years old right freshman he has that sense of a middle linebacker well he played a similar defense in high school Westerville Ohio Westerville North and he said only the, the different pass coverages has he had to learn Denson, 11 carries, 28 yards. It's second and seven. Paulus timeout. Looked over the defense to make another call. Two seconds on the play clock, and he's forced to spend a timeout. Don't want to make a mistake this deep in your own territory. 7.02 left in the third, still 22-10. Stadium, the Irish with an uphill battle, trailing 22-10. In the shadow of their own goal line, the ball on the Irish four, second and seven. Play action fake, Paulus rifles complete to Johnson, but short of the first down. It'll be third down. 
Sean Springs, making sure there was nothing there for Johnson, who fell down making the reception. Run motion away from it, then it's just a little hitch. Frankly, I don't know why Johnson doesn't keep going. He is trying to break it back outside, but if he just keeps going, he might gain a little more yards. As it was, he was three yards short, and now it's third and three. Two wide receiver formation, Nelson and Mosley. Blitz comes, pitch. And a nice run by Audrey Denson will net the Irish a first down to the 15-yard line. Interesting formation. They covered Pete Kroplevich. He's not an eligible receiver here. Here's Kroplevich. He's covered. And they run motion away to try to take a linebacker out of there. And actually, it's pretty good blocking to get it up and through. Edwards, 44, with a good block on the defensive end. Brable. Denson got all, all he could out of that run. Not much, but enough for a first down. Pete Kriplevich, 265 pounds, as you see uh, some other scores. Edwards, not been able to get out of his own tracks today as the Buckeyes have put the hurt on the uh, Norwood, Ohio native, who does have one catch for the only Irish touchdown. These four guys up front for Ohio State. Garnett, Finkus, Fickle, and Brable do a great job of allowing their linebackers to flow right at the line of scrimmage to make tackles. Because we've seen Belisari, Miller, and Katzenmoyer all day long right there at the line of scrimmage to make the tackle. So now the Irish facing two must pass downs, and Ohio State knows that too. That's what happens when you get nothing on first. Buckeyes showing blitz, but backing out of it. Hollis to the sideline. Johnson couldn't make the catch. Covered by Sean Springs. Those two have been going at it all afternoon. Now third and ten. Uh, Springs last year, he covered Derek Mays. Derek Mays had five catches for 125 yards. He generally takes the other team's best receiver or biggest receiver. And Malcolm Johnson at 6'5", 203. Has done an outstanding job. Springs was a high school running back as well as defensive back and uh, kind of misses touching the ball against Pitt. He was over there lobbying the offensive coach and send me deep. Big third down for the Irish. Showing blitz. And here they come. Call us down at the four. Greg Belisari, the linebacker, with the sack. That's what happens when you get nothing on first down. You're faced with a second and ten, a third and ten, and the defense comes after you. And Tom, it looked like when the when the defense finally deployed and everybody's up here at the line of scrimmage, actually Ron Paula says no choice. I mean, they're bringing eight guys there. Balasari is unblocked. Autry Denson, 23, tried to get over to block and couldn't. Results in the sack. Third sack of the day for the Buckeyes. Smith punts from his own end zone. Sailing punt, flag down, Springs from the Irish 48, breaks for the sideline. Sean Springs knocked out of bounds about the 35 by Kevin Coretta. 12-yard return of a 42-yard punt. Be a legal procedure against Notre Dame. I'm sure uh, the Ohio State will elect to take the football where they have it. Excellent field position again Illegal for John formation Cooper. On a kicking team, five men in the backfield. Penalty is refused. First down. So once again, a golden opportunity upcoming for the Buckeyes, who already lead 22-10. Uh, look at here, a little, little red right there, and a little bit of red right there. The Buckeyes got 5,000 tickets. They kept them all in the same three aisles here at Notre Dame Stadium. Well, they're a happy 5,000 right now, though, leading 22-10. And Williams for more. Stanley's pass. Might have slipped out of his hand. I don't know. It didn't look good. Oh, and Dean Miller, Miller opened down the field. Whoa. He went to Stanley. Whoa. 
Finley Jackson when he sees it on tape he's going to kick himself because D Miller ran the out and up and was wide open. After the hot first half Stanley Jackson has misfired 0 for 3 on his attempts in this second half although uh, in terms of total yards it looks like uh, the Buckeyes right on schedule huh? against a pretty good defense. Ron Cobbins put the hit on him. Give him about three yards. It'll bring up third down. And the Irish defense again made a big third down hold on the previous possession, looking to do it again. Time running out third quarter. Pearson wide bottom of the screen one pump away from trouble Jackson pass complete to Matt Keller great scramble by Stanley Jackson got outside the containment had his head up to find Matt Keller for 14 yards and a Buckeye first down. Now, Tom, this is the difference between the passing game of Ohio State and Notre Dame. When he goes back here and then starts to scramble, you watch these receivers run with him to become receivers, and he's going to find the fullback for a reception. Now, watch the way the plan folds. He's flushed. Now, watch all the receivers he has available. They're all running with him. He can pick one. He finds the fullback completion first down. We're not seeing that out of Notre Dame. Ball on the 18, and Pearson with a uh, carry of a couple of yards. So far in the second half, Notre Dame doing a better job on Pepe Pearson after he had shredded him for over 100 yards in the first half. Obviously, Bob Davy uh, making some adjustments at intermission. Yeah, he, he's trying to figure out just what works best, and they stop Pearson and then. Jackson turns loose, 124 yards. That's just rushing. He's also had several big catches. Pearson. Good defense. Benny Gilbo, the safety, comes up in a hurry for run support. After the fullback Calhoun had taken on a linebacker, leaving Gilbo free to come get the ball carrier. Looking for the hat trick again today. Third and six from the Irish 14 yard line. Pass complete, tight end, touchdown. DJ Jones. With his first touchdown, and that is a story in itself. D.J. Jones, who had what amounted to open heart surgery, worked his way back, returns to football, and catches a touchdown pass at Notre Dame Stadium. D.J. Jones uh, found himself being fatigued, knew something was wrong. Turns out he had histoplasmosis and a calcification of the pericardium, which surrounds the heart. Had an operation. They opened his chest, removed it. There he is back on the football field with a touchdown. Extra point good by Josh Jackson. Kick is good. So DJ Jones, a memorable moment, wears a special shoulder pad to protect that incision. Yeah, but the incision is up here, but it's just protection. Runs a nice pattern, just a simple, simple square, but watch the strength here. It runs through the tackle of Jarvis Edison, gets the ball in the end zone, young man from Lebanon, Ohio. And he incises Notre Dame for a uh, second half touchdown as the Buckeyes up their lead to 29 to 10. Look at D.J. Jones. Uh, his coaches call him a pioneer. Nobody's ever played yeah. after having uh, their sternum cracked open and uh, nearly open heart surgery. Daryl Dean Jones, Jr. Probably take that football back with him. And a big smile. Look at that. <laughs> Those numbers are scary. 
show no signs of a letting up. The sun makes an appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium. Wearing a Buckeye uniform at the moment. Speedster Rossum at the two. Trying to bring it all the way back across the field and it stopped at the 16-yard line. Only a 14-yard return. And the aerial shots of Notre Dame Stadium after today's game, the Goodyear blimp will cruise over to New York where they'll assist NBC in coverage of the baseball playoffs, which begin Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium with the Yankees against the Texas Rangers. We'll have that broadcast for you starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, next door to us today, Bob, uh, George Steinbrenner, the boss of the New York Yankees. Day of relaxation, but he's a Notre Dame fan, so not very happy. Hollis completes the pass while running for his life. Malcolm Johnson. There's a flag down as Johnson is across the 20 yard line. He may have stepped out of bounds and then come back in and caught the ball. That may be the discussion, Bob. I think you're right. And, and you could hear on the sideline there saying, keep the spot. The legal man downfield. Bounds, untouched, came in, was the first uh. to touch the ball. Therefore, we have illegal touching. On the offense, the penalty is loss of down only, second down. The illegal touch after he went out of bounds and came back and was first to touch the ball, Malcolm Johnson. I, I thought I saw him out of bounds, and in the NFL, the official throws the hat. Right. This official threw the flag, because you can come back in bounds in the NFL and catch the ball. College, you cannot. Good pick up, Bob. It's second and ten for the Irish. Brant Gators putting it on the Wildcats, still in the first half at the Swamp. Seminoles in a tough game with the Tar Heels. Reverse to Mosley. Got room. Emmett Mosley can't get away from Ty Howard. Howard, the quarterback, had a slight angle. Had Mosley gotten by him, he had a lot of room to run. Ty Howard closed in a hurry. It looked like man coverage. You're going to see it coming all the way from over here, and you should see two. There he is right there from Ohio State. Flash he makes up a lot of ground here and stops him. Does he have enough for a first down? I think they're going to measure. It is a first down for Notre Dame. You know, he's a big part of the secret to the success of the Ohio State defense. Ty Howard and Sean Springs can play man-to-man, -man, but I think down. any receivers in college football, that affords your defensive coordinator blitzes, safety coverages, all kinds of things. lined up as a tight end now on the right side. Normally the fullback. Draw play. Denson to the 30. Tough four-yard gain for Audrey Denson. Let's go to the sideline and John Dockery. Don? You know, Tom, you'll appreciate this, Trump. Coming into this game, the tight end was a big part of the Irish offense. As a matter of fact, Kerkovich had 11 catches and was one of the leading receivers. But today, as you see, he's having trouble. He's limping around. But during that last timeout, Paulus and Kerkovich spent a lot of time together. So you might want to keep an eye on the tight end. It would be a good throw, especially since they're shutting down the outside receivers with man-to-man. Randy Kinder at tailback as Paulus runs the option and a pitch to Randy Kinder. He's got a block downfield and he blasts ahead for a first down just short of the Irish 40. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. And of course, Kinder was on the receiving end of that pitch last week in Texas, got absolutely hammered. And it was a, a missed block by a receiver. Randy told us I didn't remember the plane ride back from uh, Austin, Texas to South Bend. 
but in a sort of perverse way, was glad to get that hit, but sort of, sort of welcomed him back to football after he missed the first two games with a quad injury. Kinder gets the call again and has five or six yards. Now, this is the hit on the pitch. Now, the cornerback is supposed to be blocked by a wide receiver. Obviously, he was not. Kinder didn't play again. He is fine. And the third quarter will come to a close. Ohio State continues to dominate Notre Dame at the end of three. It's 29-10. We'll return to Notre Dame after these messages and a word from your local station. 18-12 overture and the traditional Notre Dame salute to Lou Holtz and the Irish to Tchaikovsky's 18-12 overture. One of the few things that the Macarena has to take it over, I guess. Yeah, I think if they do the Macarena here, they may blow this place up, tear it down, start over. <laughs> Third quarter, better for Notre Dame, but staying close won't get it done. They're down 19. Second down play from the Irish 44. Randy Kinder picking his way forward, stopped a yard short of the first down. Well, again, just no place to run. Uh, Ohio State defensive line able to just stand up the Notre Dame offensive line. And just a big crowd of bodies there. Be third down in a yard as Fickle and the Buckeye defense get big Orlando pace back on the field in this short yardage situation. Some of those uh, Notre Dame offensive linemen look up and they'll think that eclipse was uh, two days late. <laughs> Denson spins for it, and I believe will have it on the spin, though not by much. And if he had pounded straight ahead, he wasn't going to make it. He was able to uh, spin a half spin off the tackle and get the first down. Uh, Ryan Miller, number 43, finally makes the tackle. But again, the Ohio State defensive line stands him up, stands him up good. Orlando Pace gets pancake. He's used to being the pancaker. <laughs> there he's the pancake E. I don't want to play defense anymore, coach. Let me knock them down. <laughs> Robert Farmer is in at fullback. Jamie Spencer, the backup fullback, has been shaken up, so Farmer normally a tailback gets that spot. The option pitch to Denson and defense Man. well by Ohio State. Damon Moore and Ryan Miller defensing the option. Denson uh, was lucky to uh, get a couple of yards out of it. Let's go back to that the last play. <laughs> Here's 75. They keep track of his pancakes. But this time, Wisney gets him on the ground. Right. The assist on the tackle, though. Orlando knows what color uh, jersey or foot or leg to grab a hold of. Hollis, complete champion. As a first down for Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame's offense has really struggled to find something to do consistently. And uh, this is a nice little hitch pass run. This has been a tough day for Lou and his offense. It's going to go to the receiver out here. There he is. He just runs the little drag route to the outside. Good first down pickup. Soft coverage by Sean Springs. Denson with a head of steam. Blasts across the 30, down inside the 29 to the 28-yard line. Just short of the first down. Moore and Kelly, the safeties. It's going to be second and about two. Yeah, best thing about this gives that uh, Notre Dame defense a little rest. Some time on the sideline. But the Irish need points. And lots of them. Fourth quarter, down 19. with a fake. Tip tipped at the line of scrimmage intended for Malcolm Johnson. It'll be third down. May have been, yeah, may have been Fickle who got his hand up there. He's been around the ball today, hadn't he? Had an interception earlier. Decent pass protection. They run a little stunt. See if we can pick up who gets his hand up. Yeah, it is Fickle, 99. They run a little defensive line stunt there. And he disrupts the play. Third down and a little more than a yard on this Notre Dame drive. 
Edwards has the first down, lowers his head, powers to the 14-yard line. Blake Belisari, the tackle. It's going to be rough for uh, Mark Edwards to go back home to Norwood, having lost uh, consecutive years to Ohio State, and the score holds up. Although he says uh, the Ohio State coaches, players, everyone were very cordial. The fans were not, however. They were a little rough. Fans are that way, aren't they? Trader was one of the kindest things they called him. Kinder has nowhere to go. Well, no game. It's a, not a good idea to run a delay against this defense. That's what Kinder, Kinder's like saying, let, straight ahead, let's yes. go straight ahead. Here's Katzenmoyer. Uh, last year at this time, he was also preparing for a big game, Grove City High School. <laughs> he was a senior, he's a, our big rival. This kid has walked in here like he's uh, played college football for the last three years. Blitz comes, Paulus reads it, but then the pass over the head of Malcolm Johnson, who was uh, closely guarded by Sean Spring. And Malcolm Johnson was not ready. One of the things about being a wide receiver is you must recognize Blitz. And if you're going to recognize Blitz, you've got to know you're the hot receiver. That is the outlet to the quarterback when he's under extreme duress. Johnson barely looked up. The uh, Notre Dame wide receivers have not had a very sparkling game for their first third and long conversion. Screen pass for Levitch, the tight end. Fairly immobile, he stopped for no gain by Mike Vrabel. Didn't fool anybody either. There were four Ohio State defenders out there. Looks like Lou's choice is it on fourth down to go for it, too. Four, sending a Rocky Nelson in with the play on fourth down and 11. As we said, time running out and the Irish in need of a lot of points. for four this season. Denson in the slot. Actually, the three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen, and Denson holding up his hands. Couldn't hear the change of the play by Paulus. Comes the blitz. Picked up, and the pass caught by Denson across the middle, but short of the first down. Damon Moore wrapped him up and made sure he couldn't reach the marker. Damon Moore has had a big game for Ohio State. Buckeyes take over on downs, leading 29-10. Take your blimp shot there of one of the beautiful campuses in America, but when Ron Paulus came to Notre Dame as the Ballyhooed quarterback, best in the nation, the next in the long line of Irish greats, he had hopes of a national championship been very buoyant throughout his first three games of this season. We talked to him yesterday, said the Texas win was the high point of his career, mostly because they were still unbeaten, still hoping for that national championship. Now trailing Ohio State big in the fourth quarter. Dreams of the national championship fading into memory. Pearson to the 23-yard line. Happy Pearson. Benny Gilbo will get credit for the stop with Corey Miner. And Ohio State now will play a little ball control, protecting a 19-point lead. And can they ever? Their only problem in this situation is they score too quickly. Absolutely. Boy, can they, can they hang on to it for a while with this offensive line? And a counter play to Matt Keller. Gang tackled with Ronaldo Wynn and Alton Maiden leading the charge. Ronaldo Wynn. We uh, learned when we were at Columbus the other day at Ohio State, I asked John Cooper about the conditioning of his football team, and he said, this is a rare bunch. In the summer, they all stay in Columbus, and they all voluntarily work out against each other, including uh, NFL past Buckeyes who are now in the NFL. They get back and play against these kids. Uh, Sean Springs is covering Joey Galloway. Uh, it's a very entertaining and a very competitive thing, and he said, these, these kids have a great work ethic. Third down. Blossom on a blitz. Pitch to Pearson the other way. Pepe Pearson. Blockers in front. Makes a cutback to the outside. Finally caught by Ross. 
awesome from behind. Well, it was the fastest man on the Ohio State team, the fastest man on the Notre Dame team. Rawson caught him from behind as Pearson slowed down to let his blockers get a block, but it covers 38 yards. And they run left. Again, pull the guard, nice little fold block, and then the rest of it's Pepe Pearson. Missed tackle there, and then look, he's got two guys out there to escort them. Runs by both of them. 38 yards later, he's brought to the ground, and there is an Irish player on the ground. Now watch number 75 here. He is on Mel Dansby. Oh, that's a pancake. That might even be a crepe. Coach, he rolled him up too, huh? Yes, he did. He rolled him up, made him thin. <laughs> the coaches at Ohio State keep track of those pancakes and interesting to talk to Orlando Pace in person. He's a very quiet, yes. almost gentle sort of guy. Yes. I mean, the, the thing about this this young man at 6'6", 330, 340, he moves like he weighs 220. And he said, well, when I went entered high school, I was 6'5", 290. So he's been this size for a while. Size 16 shoe then, too. Let's go to the sideline and uh, John Dockery. Doc? Hey, Tom, you know, quarterbacks have touchdowns, running backs have yards, defensive linemen have sacks. What does a poor offensive lineman have? Not much until now. Now offensive line has pancakes. And the king of the pancake is Orlando Pace. Coming into the game, he had 15, right? Today he got another, let's see, one, two, three, four. So that makes an unofficial total of 19 pancakes for the big man. And the big man could eat those pancakes, too, I guarantee you. Uh, he has helped Pepe Pearson outgain Notre Dame all by himself. Here's Pearson again. Fumble. Picked up by Notre Dame's Ivory Covington. So finally found a chink in Pearson's armor. A minute ago, Alan Rossum shaking up after tackling Pearson. This time it's Kenan Tatum that's down for Notre Dame. But the Irish defense does get the turnover. Pearson like, is human after all. Yeah, it looks like Dansby, 51, hit him from behind, but Erdam gets the ball back. After this fumble, now the Irish need to do something with it. We'll be back. Oh. Notre Dame needs a big play, but Lou Holtz has said repeatedly this is not a big play team. You don't get that ka-ching, ka-ching. It's more like drip, drip, drip. And they need some big plays, some points in a hurry. Notre Dame averaging just less than three yards a rush today. Ohio State over five. Paulus airs it deep. Malcolm Johnson double coverage and broken up by Ohio State. That was close. John Springs and Rob Kelly had him sandwiched. Now Ohio State's playing zone. That's why Sean Springs is uh, backing off. Johnson does a good job of getting right up in his face, but Rob Kelly does a great job of breaking that to pass up again, thrown well by Ron Paulus. Paulus is 12 of 25 for 112 yards today. One touchdown and one picked off. Option. Pitch it to the tailback, Denson. Notre Dame are into Ohio State territory and twisted down by Rob Kelly short of the first down. And if you set up a football game, you want to stop their big guy. They've certainly done it. Bobby Denson today, when he's run free, he's going sideline to sideline, not end zone to end zone. 17 carries for those 56 yards. and bounces off would be tacklers racing for the end zone Coretta knocked out of bounds at the five yard line 42 yard gain on the pass to Kevin Coretta only his second reception of the season Rob Kelly and Damon Moore 
Bumped him out at the five. He is the replacement for Kroplevich with the bad ankle. This ball's thrown about three yards across the line of scrimmage. Someone misses a tackle here. Who misses him? Yeah, someone. It's Hudson Moyer. Moyer. He tries to block him down instead of tackling him. That may have worked in high school. Big pickup. Two tight ends. Pitch to Denson. Penetration by Ohio State. Man. And a great play made in the backfield by Mike Vrabel. Sean Springs and that side of the Ohio State defense. There were four Buckeyes there to make the tackle. Seven twenty-two and counting. Right, Denson has nowhere to go. Edwards. Mark Edwards, touchdown. <laughs> Second touchdown of the day for Norwood, Ohio's Mark Edwards. The first came on a pass. Spread formation that time by Notre Dame. Draw up the middle to the fullback. will go for one on the conversion. Yeah, looked like Lou changed his mind. He originally sent out the uh, the team to go for two and now he sends in the kicker. Samson is blocked. Now that's a live ball. If Ohio State gets it and takes it in, it's going to be ruled down there. It could have been a potential two points for the Buckeyes, but ruled down. Conversion no good. It remains 29-16. Pepe Pearson fumbled. Mark Edwards took it in for the Irish touchdown. So two Edwards touchdowns, a result of Ohio State turnovers. But it's 29-16 and time growing short. Conversion. Lou wanted to go for two here. I don't know what happened, but settling for one with a two-point conversion, if they make it, then a touchdown, two-point conversion, a field goal, they take the lead. But as if, I, I don't know, could you figure that out? Why the confusion there? Well, some indecision, and uh, the kicking unit got out there a little late. I don't know if that contributed or not. Squid kick picked up by Stanley. Demetrius Stanley. Got a good return to the 30-yard uh, line. 25-yard return by Stanley. Well, tomorrow NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action. Starts the special time, 12 noon Eastern, the NFL on NBC. Then most of you will see Jeff Hostetler, the silver and black, attack the Windy City as the Raiders take on the Bears. Some of you will see a battle in the AFC West as Marcus Allen and the undefeated Chiefs take on the Chargers. Others will see the Steelers host the Oilers or the Broncos battle the Bengals. Check your local listings, the NFL on NBC, starting at noon Eastern time tomorrow. Jackson still at quarterback for the Buckeyes. Fullback Matt Calhoun stopped by Kenan Tatum and Ronaldo Wynn. Alton Maiden is there too. The numbers have changed around for the two teams, but that 283 in the first half by Ohio State so devastated. Notre Dame's defense. They've had a, a couple of chances here. Ohio State has not played as good in the first half as they did as they have in the second half. But I mean, that's understandable. I mean, they played so well in that first half. Pearson. He has the first down. Pearson. Uh, you know, we talked to the Notre Dame coaches. They said we've got to do anything and everything we can to stop the run. Last year, uh, Eddie George had, uh, I think, 207 yards rushing. Uh, Pearson has dominated this football game on offense for Ohio State. 
out gained Notre Dame all by himself has Pepe Pearson. And the one fumble that led to the last Notre Dame score, other than that, a flawless game. Joe Montgomery replaces Pearson here at tailback. And Calhoun, short game, Maiden and win on the tackle. Pearson uh, leaves the field. It looked like he sprained his ankle slightly. Uh, his left ankle kind of gets folded underneath him, but doesn't appear to be a serious sprain. 176 for the day. Gotta get it. Give him 45. <laughs> Archie Griffin's old number. Austin and Wiley, the freshman wideouts, bottom of the screen. Handed off to Joe Montgomery. And the number two rusher for the Buckeyes. With a short game, stopped by Bert Berry. Clock down, under five minutes. Irish need a quick stop, quick score. Notre Dame will have a week off before returning here to face the tough Washington Huskies. And for Ohio State, they go home, but the next opponent is Penn State. Jackson. Jackson shaking up. Corey Miner did not buy the fake at all. Well, you know now, Irish fans are reminding themselves of all of the uh, blocked punts and kicks that Lou Holtz has produced in his years here. But this is designed to get Stanley Jackson out away from the pursuit and to turn him loose. Corey Miner doesn't buy it. What happens? He grabbed him by the neck. I think he landed on the football. He may have just knocked the wind out of him. See if he doesn't land on that football right in his breadbasket. Mm. Grabbing his knee a little bit. Can't really tell exactly what's going on there. But and limping a little bit as he leaves the field. Of course. With their 1A and 1B quarterback system, Joe Germain, uh, very capable if he has to go in on the next possession. Yeah, well, Notre Dame's already blocked one punt today. Definitely need one here. Bartholomew the punt. And Autry Denson. Well, they set up the return. Drives Denson back to the 10 yard line. Denson breaks free, cuts up, and Autry Denson will race all the way. It'll be an 88-yard score. Denson, touchdown. There is a flag back at the 20-yard line. And if this touchdown stands, how big is that two-point conversion? that they didn't try for and then missed the extra point. It's it is coming back. An 88-yard punt return by Autry Denson, nullified by a penalty. thing almost got interesting. Still 335 left.
You are no stranger to this return. You see Ty Good with a handful of jersey on Antoine Winfield, and that was the call. There's Good. His penalty nullified the 88-yard touchdown return by Autry Denson, number 23. And that penalty is a no-brainer. Irish now at their own 10, trailing 29-16. Fox shows 3-35. in trouble and sacked again by Luke Fickle after he ran into one of his own blockers and then a flag flies Fickle's in the middle of it with Paulus unsportsmanlike against Ohio State they were trying to run the screen to Audrey Denson out in the flat that's why Paulus sets up so early Denson's on the ground Nicole Stay grabs a hold of his face. legs. Stay out of his face. No. Stay out of his face. 99. 99. It's on Fickle. Yeah. It's unusual to hear a referee <laughs> give out uh, numbers in college football. And the taunt call against Fickle. As Ohio State has been all over Ron Paulus. Even when they haven't sacked him, they've made his life miserable. Thrown the ball away five times in the face of pressure. So they marked the yardage from the spot that he was set. And it is second and about two, one and a half. Paulus down the sideline, Malcolm Johnson battling Sean Springs. Springs wins that one, pass incomplete. He's won most of them, frankly. He's done an excellent job. Bump and run, gets right up in uh, Johnson's face. And when he starts looking back, runs with him, turns his head around, that's an excellent job. Had the inside position, nothing Johnson could do except try to keep Springs from catching the football. Remember, this is a third down play. Draw play, handoff to Denson. He'll net the first down and will momentarily stop the clock. Greg Belisari with the hit for Ohio State. That's it for the first Dame ready to go to its two-minute offense. Paulus. Everyone was covered. And that was a dangerous pass. Springs had dead aim on it, and it was Malcolm Johnson that was able to knock it down. Wallace was ready to throw. Johnson had not finished his pattern, unfortunately. You see the double coverage there. A little holding going on down the field. Only slows the pattern up, but Johnson does break up. Pretty good chance at an interception, incomplete pass. Wallace has hit 14 of 29, 154 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Four wides. Farmer is the only setback. Option pitch to Farmer. Got a block on the corner, but cuts back into the pursuit and is only to the 30-yard line where Ryan Miller gets him down. Clock continues to roll now to 2.30. Oh, this is amazing. They're trying to run a hurry up and they change two people on the uh, offense here. Malcolm Johnson has to leave the field. Coretta, the intended receiver, and uh, deflected Ryan Miller as Coretta found a little seam, but the ball was deflected and nearly intercepted. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth down and about two for Notre Dame. Approaching two minutes. 
They're 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions in this game. Aulis, Kriplevich dropped it, intercepted, picked off by Rob Kelly. Kelly down the sideline with Paulus to beat, and Ron Paulus makes the touchdown saving tackle, and then it's thrown down. Uh, this can't happen. John Cooper's in there trying to separate everybody. Still some pushing going on, and John Cooper, in fact, into it with the referee, Jim Kimmerling. Paulus was the only man left to prevent Kelly from scoring after the interception, and he made the tackle, and then the fight broke out. I tried to go to his favorite receiver, Kraplevich, even with the bad ankle. Pete's not practiced all week long. He doesn't catch it cleanly. Bounces off. Kelly with the interception and then did not see live what happened. Let's see. Paulus with the tackle. What else? I don't know what else happens, but John Cooper's right down there to. to get his kids away. He doesn't want an ugly incident here. So the Buckeyes now with a chance to uh, put it away for good. 16 yard line. Back up tailback Joe Montgomery with the carry. Tackled by Mel Dansby. Well let's take a look at our Chevrolet players of the game for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Pepe Pearson. Huge I'm day rushing in football. Dansby. And Mark Edwards, the Ohio native, who scored Notre Dame's two touchdowns. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so that they may continue their education. Chevrolet and the NCAA, proud partners for more than a quarter of a century. I'm convinced. How about you? 165 yards in Ohio State. Answering the questions, how good are they? They are real good, offensively and defensively. And now return home to face the tough Nittany Lions of Penn State. So the Buckeyes will remain alive in the hunt for the national championship. Another big hurdle next week, Penn State, and then the likes of Wisconsin and arch-rival Michigan awaiting as well. But the two biggest games of the season today and next week, one would think, for John Cooper and the Buckeyes. Yeah, he found out a lot about his football team. On the road, two young quarterbacks. They uh, went to what they uh, do best. That's run, control the line of scrimmage. Excellent job by their defense. Montgomery. It'll bring up fourth down. Tough loss for Lou Holtz. We said at the beginning of the telecast, he told us that he was tired of everybody asking him about Ohio State. Tired of hearing about it. He said his team would be ready to play. First half domination by the Buckeyes, leading to their victory today. Final seconds, 15 seconds left. The Buckeyes will not have to run another play. And a convincing victory for Ohio State, though one wonders if Denson's punt return had stood up what the final three minutes might have been like. That's it. Ohio State comes to Notre Dame for the first time in 60 years. And the fourth-ranked Buckeyes remain unbeaten. I'm with Coach Cooper now. Trouncing Notre Dame 29-16. John Dockery on the field with John Cooper. Coach, before the game, you had some questions about your team. What answers did you get today? Well, we beat a great football team here today. I'm so proud of our program. Our, you know, from Dr. Gee, or the, the president of Ohio State University, Andy Geiger, Archie Griffin, our players, our coaches. You don't come to Notre Dame Stadium and beat Notre Dame as bad as we beat them today without having a good football team. A lot of football left to be played, but I tell you, there ain't anybody in America happier than John Cooper right now. How good is this football team? Well, we were pretty good today. We were pretty good today. Uh, turn the ball over. The ball game was not this close, I think, as you know. It's a great victory for us, though, and we just need to keep going. We got Penn State next week. We got Penn State next week, Wisconsin right on down the road. Congratulations, Coach, on a big win. Hey, thank you very much.
Huge win for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. They came to Notre Dame for the first time in 60 years after outscoring Rice and Pitt 144 to 7. The question was, how good are they? An early answer to that question came on the opening kickoff as Demetrius Stanley raced 85 yards. Then Orlando Pace and the offensive line of the Buckeyes took over. Their defense throttled Notre Dame. And the answer was they are very good. A convincing 29-16 winner over Notre Dame in South Bend and still alive in the chase for the national championship. Tomorrow, NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action at the special time of 12 noon Eastern with the NFL on NBC. Then most of you will see the silver and black attack the Windy City as the Raiders take on the Bears. Five-yard return. Remember, Notre Dame, the opening kickoff at the home in the season in South Bend was a touchdown return that set the tone for their opener against Purdue at home. This sent the tone for Ohio State. And then Pepe Pearson, out of the backfield, the factor, Cooper put him out as a receiver. 26 yards here from Stanley Jackson down to the one-yard line. And Ohio State would punch it in from there with who else? Pepe Pearson running in one other direction to the left. Ohio State jumped out to a 29-10 lead, hung on, to beat Notre Dame 29-16, limiting the Irish to 126 rushing yards. The difference in this game? Pepe Pearson. He had 173 all on his own in two fewer carries. Denson, Kinder, and Farmer were held under 100 yards on the ground where the Buckeyes win.